everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. So today I thought I would share with you some baby things that I really regret buying or that I didn't really use much but also the ones that I have found really essential and that I'm glad that I have bought and I'm going to talk about items that kind of span like from naught to one year old because my son Arthur is now 14 months old if you didn't know already. I have done a separate newborn essentials video obviously ages ago so if you are more looking for just that kind of thing I will, will leave that link below but hopefully you'll find this video helpful. So yes I really hope that you enjoy this video and I'm going to start off with the things that I regret buying. So the first thing that I do not really think that I needed to buy was actually a changing bag. Yes, you do need a bag to take out nappies, wipes, change of clothes, all that kind of thing, but you don't need to buy a changing bag. So many people spend so much money on these things. I mean, mine was fairly cheap. I think it was around like 20 pounds on Amazon. So it wasn't a lot of money, but I know some people go and spend a massive amount of money, much more than that, and you don't really need it. It is really helpful. As I say, you definitely need a bag. It's really useful to have one with lots of compartments and different storage, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a changing bag. It can just be a normal bag. You might already have one. So have a look in your cupboards, have a look at your bags, and you may find something that can be used. You can also buy little inserts as well, which are a lot cheaper. And nowadays I just use a normal backpack and for me I much prefer it, it's something that I could use a bit later on down the line as well and yeah I definitely did not need to buy a actual changing bag. One item that I didn't really need was a steriliser, so back in the day I used to express milk and then bottle feed Arthur and we did have a microwave steriliser but we also had an electric steam one as well and I much preferred the microwave one so I really didn't need to buy this fancy electric steam one it just took longer it was more complicated it always used to get what's the word is it like lime scale or whatever and no kind of amount of descaling would get rid of it it just didn't work very well and to be honest with you the microwave one was just so much simpler easy to use and a lot quicker too I was bought a baby sensor so one of those little gadgets it actually clipped on to Arthur's nappy and you know if the baby doesn't move I think that it after I think it's around 20 seconds it would make an alarm but I actually never never used it you can also get the ones that go under the mattress as well now when Arthur was he was readmitted to hospital when he was about four weeks old I think they thought he had an infection which he didn't thankfully um, but yeah I kind of had mentioned this and basically it just seems that like all the doctors and nurses because I've spoken to other people and they've been told the same thing as well by professionals that they don't actually recommend using them. When I spoke to the doctor about it, she said, well, you know, if it doesn't go off after 20 seconds, that tells you that the babies, you know, they do, they can stop breathing for that period of time. And that is fine. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. So I think they think that th that sort of thing will worry you unnecessarily. I mean, it is hard because I think obviously, God forbid, if something did happen and thing worked and it woke you up in time for you to do something then obviously but for us I just never used it I think I was very anxious and I actually think it just would have made me worse anyway I mean I was breastfeeding we were co-sleeping he had a snooze pod but I just really didn't ever use the monitor or a sensor and they are quite expensive as well so just obviously if you think you'll use it and it'll give you peace of mind then do but just double check, like read up on it and just make sure that you actually will use it before you buy one because they are really expensive. Something else that we haven't really used until fairly recently is something called Ollie the Owl, which you may know is kind of like a cuddly toy and it makes lots of different white noise sounds. There's like one like rain, there's a heartbeat and there's also a lullaby song too and it lights up and obviously white noise is great for babies. I think people use them for babies even older than newborn to kind of help them sleep because it helps to dr drown out background noise. But for us, when we used white noise when Arthur was very little, we actually just used YouTube on our phones. We didn't need to use this machine. And again, they are quite a pricey item. Nowadays, Arthur does actually play with it as a toy, but that's not obviously what it was bought for or necessarily what it was just intended for. So I definitely think it's something that we didn't need to buy. An item that we bought and didn't really get on that well with was the pram parasol. So it's a little umbrella that clips onto the pram and obviously it's to help shade the baby from the sun. But you can imagine it's there and obviously as you're walking in different directions, the sun is obviously going to be in a different place 
and it just didn't really work, it just wobbled around too much, I think it used to irritate my baby and especially now that he is older I just don't think he would tolerate it at all, I think he would just be constantly trying to pull it off. I have seen people use, I think they call like snoo shades which I think I definitely would have preferred. I remember asking on my Instagram like a poll what would people advise, I actually think most people did say the parasol but when we, even though we still bought it, but when we did look at the reviews when we were buying it, all the reviews of all the pram parasols weren't that good. So I don't think it's just me that doesn't really get on well with them. I think I would definitely recommend getting a shade one that kind of covers the whole pram. Now the next item, I wasn't sure if I was going to include it on this video, so I did talk about my weaning stuff, everything that I bought and kind of how useful I found it or not in my weaning essentials guide and I did mention this, I didn't actually show it, but it's this one, so this is like a travel high chair seat, hopefully you can see it there and I don't know because when I was preparing for this video my husband mentioned that and he said I don't think you know we really needed to buy it that being said, we did use it kind of mainly for when we went on holiday, not long after we started weaning and it was really really helpful because the high chair where we were staying was just really like grubby and it had cobwebs all over it and I just really didn't fancy using it for Arthur so luckily we had brought that one just in case. So for that week alone it was probably worth buying it, I think it was around maybe £22, £25, something like that. However that being said we haven't really used it since, we used it a couple of times after that holiday but that was mainly because Arthur was kind of going through a phase of not really wanting to eat and we just thought if we changed the seat maybe that would kind of encourage him to eat a bit more and be a bit happier but yeah it just hasn't really been something that we have used I know people do take them on picnics we just sit Arthur on a blanket I've seen people put them babies in these on like their table or whatever or even on a rug if they're having a snack or anything but to be honest with you we've always just put Arthur either in his high chair or if he has a snack he'll sit on my lap or he'll just sit on the floor or in the high chair so yeah I don't know they aren't that expensive so it's not a massive waste of money if you don't use it but I just wanted to include it in here because it is something that my husband said we probably didn't really need to buy something that I kind of wish we had thought about a bit more before buying was storage for toys so I think automatically you think of a toy box at least we did so we did buy this big kind of like wicker basket which was good we also bought a lovely toy box kind of a proper one for his it's either christmas or first birthday so they are really nice they look nice it's great for storage however obviously because it's all just open everything gets chucked in everything's on top of each other and it's just really difficult to have any sort of order to it so i really wish that we just hadn't done that yes i think i'm glad that we've got the toy box he was bought because it's lovely and it looks lovely in the room that we have for him but the one that we bought we didn't really need we also store some of his toys in the bottom part of our dresser but I think what we should have done is invested in a storage you know those ones kind of like the ones you get at Ikea where it's all like in cubes and just had a nice like a drawer for puzzles and a drawer for like wooden toys and a drawer for like crafts that kind of thing and we could have all separated it out and it would have been really nice organized and tidy but yeah it's definitely something that I wish I had kind of like thought about sooner some things that I kind of regret buying or that we didn't really use was certain clothes for Arthur and so as I say Arthur is now 14 months and I'm filming this at the beginning of April so we are coming on to summer again last summer when he was like six seven months old we had bought t-shirts but we didn't really use them because if it was hot hot enough for him not to have any sleeves we would just end up using a, a vest like a bodysuit we thought he would probably be too hot in a bodysuit and a t-shirt so we ended up just not using the t-shirts that often similarly kind of like over like say autumn time we bought him a jacket and we didn't ever really use it if it was really cold we put him in a pram suit otherwise we kind of had these quite like thick chunky kind of like jackets but not more like a, it looked like a cardigan but they were just quite fleecy if that makes sense we bought kind of a nice kind of jacket it was from ebay so it wasn't that expensive and it was second hand but yeah, it's just certain clothes that I kind of regret buying and I would just say if you are a first time mum I guess don't go mad about buying clothes because I think you'd probably be surprised at what you use and what you don't use, kind of what you find a bit of a faff to put on or what you find easier, you know, what you want to dress your baby in. But my advice would just be to buy clothes a bit by bit, see what you use, what you find useful and go from there. 
So now I'm going to move on to the items that I find really useful and that I'm glad I did buy. As I said, I've done a new board essentials one. I can't remember everything that I've listed on there, but I think mainly this isn't a repeat of that. So yeah, go and watch that video if you think you might find that helpful. An absolute essential for us, and I probably have mentioned this at some point on my channel, is the baby carrier. So we have bought an Ergo Omni 360 baby carrier, I think when Arthur was about five months old and we absolutely love it. We are still using it now, so it's nearly a whole year already. And we actually bought ours on eBay. They are very, very expensive. Ours was still quite expensive, because I think it was new or like only used once or twice or something. But uh, my advice probably would be to get one second hand if you can. Arthur much prefers being in the baby carrier. I love it as well. He can just like see around. I can see what he's seeing, if that makes sense. And yeah, it was definitely, definitely worth the money. We use it all the time, wherever I go out for walks with him or if we go out for a day trip, we always take it with us and he much prefers it to the pram. So I definitely recommend it and I do really like our one as well. Another item that is definitely an essential for us and I'm glad we bought is a sleeping bag here. So we actually need to buy a bigger one for Arthur quite soon because this only lasts up to 18 months and I think he is growing pretty much out of it nearly. So yeah, this is a 2.5 tog in case you're interested. So when Arthur was or before he was born, I did buy some little grow swaddles, I think they're called, from the grow bag company where you could actually put their arms in or out. But I just never felt that comfortable and then I realised they were probably a bit thick for our room temperature and I just, I didn't use them, I just used blankets. But then as Arthur got older, kind of after the summer months went, I decided to try a sleeping bag again and I'm so glad that I did. He really loves it. I thought he might struggle because he'd not been in one for such a long time. But he actually really liked it. And it obviously keeps it nice and warm, you know that it's safe. Obviously do make sure that you get the right size because if the neck's too big, the idea, obviously, the worry is that they could obviously like sink down into it. But as long as you get the right size, then it should be fine. But yeah, we really, really love ours. So that is definitely an essential for us. A great little item that I really, really like is a little mirror in the car. So it just attaches to the headrest in front of Arthur. And it just means that when I'm driving, I'm and I'm by myself and my husband isn't with me, I can just look in my mirror and then I can see Arthur in his mirror, if that makes sense. And I know if he's okay, I know if he's asleep or awake or if he's upset, he can like just about see my eyes sort of thing. And it's so useful to have, especially when he was younger. And you know what it's like, you're like, are they breathing? I can't hear him breathing, like, is he okay? And I could just look at that and I could just see that he was okay. And we got ours from Amazon, I think it was around 10 or 12 pounds, but it was such an essential, so I'm really, really glad that we have that. Something that I think I maybe have mentioned in my newborn essentials are these little syringes. So they're actually one mil syringes. Now, when you have cold pole, and obviously you have to give cold pole to babies after their vaccinations, and obviously, you know, for whatever else, maybe tea them, maybe they get a temperature at some point, but the cold pulse syringe is so big. I don't know if you find this, but especially for a newborn baby. But even now, Arthur really, really hates anything by his mouth. And he will not open his mouth big enough for us to put a cold pulse syringe in because it is pretty big. So these ones are absolutely tiny. So they are perfect. So if you have a newborn, then these are brilliant. But even now, I actually have used these for Arthur. So recently, he had his one-year jabs you know, a couple of months ago. And... Obviously, because they're only one mil, you have to do like several of them. But still, to us, it's much easier than using a big syringe. So I'd really recommend these. I think I bought a box of, I want to say 100 for 9.99. I bought them, as I say, when he was like newborn or really, really young. And I still have some left now. So yes, I would definitely, definitely recommend getting these. Another item that I find really, really useful and I love to use is the tough tray. So I've spoken about this. If you see my video about how to entertain your baby or the sensory play one, a tough tray basically is just a big, it's one meter round wide, big black tray. And you can just do all sorts in there. So you can do all your different play ideas, anything like messy, you can just put in there and it keeps it all contained. And Arthur loves doing that sort of thing. It's just something a bit different. So the tough tray is definitely, definitely an essential. And I think it was around 12 or 13 pounds. And whilst we're on that subject, everything kind of like sensory is really, really good. So like the foil blankets, the light up flashing balls, anything that you can buy. And I like looking back now, I probably could have bought more when he was very, very little, but there's just so much that you can buy. But honestly, it's so good. It's so beneficial for babies to have all this sensory stuff going on. And a tough tray is a brilliant place to do it all on. 
And essential for our first time mums, especially new mums I would say, is snacks that you can easily eat with one hand and also water bottles. I just have loads of snacks in the house because you will get hungry, especially if you are a breastfeeding mum like I am, your appetite just goes through the roof. And you know, sometimes if you're like in all day or like the baby's asleep and maybe they're asleep on you and you can't get to a snack, it's just really, really good. Just have lots of things to hand that you can eat with one hand. Another thing that I find useful, and this is probably in my newborn essentials video, but I just wanted to say it now because I do still use it, is a nightlight. So I do have a star projector as well, but, and you can use that as a nightlight, but kind of when it's the stars and the moon, Arthur does get a little bit distracted by that. And then if he's asleep on me, I don't have a hand free to like put the thing on top, which turns it into a normal nightlight, if that makes kind of sense. But sometimes it's a bit distracting so usually I just put that one on and he enjoys looking at the stars and then like I turn it off and then I just use this which is just a normal night light. So this one as I say we've had this since he was newborn and I do still use it now. I don't use it during the night anymore like I used to. When he was little I kind of used to keep it on at a very very dim level just so I could like always see him but now we sleep in darkness it's okay. It has a warm yellow light and also has like a cooler light and you can like dim it or make it really bright. And yeah, I just think they're so much better than having like a lamp on and they're not that expensive and I still use it now. It's also portable. So there was a time not that long ago, I think, where Arthur had leaked through his nappy and I actually needed to change him for the first time during the night in ages. And I had to take him into the other room and I thought, oh, no, like, you know, it's bright. But because I had this portable night light, I could just take this in with me and just have like dim light. It's just really, really useful. Sometimes... There's stuff that I need to do and I can just work by this, you know, if I want to read a book or something, it's not going to wake him up. It's just really, really dim because when you can dim this to the lowest, it's like super, super dark, but it's just enough light so you can still see your baby. So yeah, I would definitely recommend getting a nightlight. So those are all my first time mum things that I regret buying and also things that I find really useful. I'm sure there are more. I know there are lots, lots more. So, you know, I could always do a part two, but hopefully there's just some things in there that you will find helpful and useful to know if you are a first time mum too or a new mum. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. So I'm posting three times a week. I do grocery hauls every Friday and then the other days are Wednesday and Sunday, which are usually and mostly kind of mum lifestyle type things. So like baby routines, I started doing some day in the life videos. I do a bit of cleaning sometimes as well and just all my tips and hacks I'm learning. It is kind of a journey where you're just like constantly learning. Like there's still things that I don't know now, but like now that Arthur is 14 months old, I can look back and I'm kind of sharing my knowledge of the previous time, if that makes sense. So yes, I would love for you to subscribe and stick around if that sounds like your kind of thing. But thank you so, so much for watching this video, everyone. I really hope that you have a lovely day or evening whenever you're watching this. And maybe I'll see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.